Good evening, everybody. Uh, this evening, we've got Gabriel O'Shaughnessy, um, who is a, um, a member of the Irish Photographic Federation. Uh, he's a member of FIAP. He's got an MFIAP, an FRPS. And uh, Gabriel's going to talk to us this evening about how he's got on setting up Zoom webinars to, to, to talk with camera clubs. So, uh, Gabriel, welcome, and thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, my pleasure. Good, good. That's good to know. <laughs> um, first question really is, what's your experience been so far with presenting Zoom webinars for camera clubs? Yeah, good question. It's actually been very positive, um, I have to say. Um, you know, when, when the, you know, obviously my first experience of it was with uh, my own club in Drogheda. Um, where we sort of preempted the whole lockdown and we, we went from, you know, physical club meetings to the online. And I think we were actually all pleasantly surprised how well it worked and how well people enjoyed it. Uh, we changed our format of judging competitions slightly. Um, we were able to invite guests at, at a lesser expense. So uh, also had a few old members tuning in from as far afield as South Africa and people in England, friends there. So it's actually been very positive, you know, Okay, so you get you get an increased audience by doing it on Zoom. Absolutely, we did. Yeah, yeah, um, and probably probably for a number of reasons. You know, it, I think it did take some clubs a little, a little bit of time to tune in and to realise what's going on out there. And um, but you also it's stuff we didn't factor in. You know, like people who couldn't actually physically make it to the club, maybe they're home late from work, didn't have time for a shower or. You know, that's me grabbing my coat at the last minute. Yeah. Where you could just sit down and, and uh, log on and, and you're there, you know. So like that's been that's been very positive for, for most people. Um, you know, and you know, the likes of Irene, it's Irene Fry and Jerry. Jerry's you know, he's not enjoying good health at the moment. Yeah. That's the case in hand where where you know, they may physically be difficult, especially coming into winter nights and that to get to the club. Yeah, uh, you know, so they can log in. So I, I can see it when we get back to normality and physical meetings that the Zoom is going to become more of a an option for people as well who maybe can't travel or have a distance to go. Or so yeah, it's it's positive. It, it's you know if you want to make it a positive thing, it can be. You know. Yeah. Did 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 you get did you get come across any resistance? Was there a resistance? Was there a group of resistance people who were? Oh, I'm not doing that. That's. No, not at all. Uh, not a resistance. It may be a reluctance, possibly, with, with okay. some, <laughs> yeah. as in, uh, afraid of the technology, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and people like that with all sorts of new technology. Uh, but I think that sort of barrier starting, as people see it working more and more and see the benefits of it. Um, you know, another thing uh, that I hadn't thought of, like, I'm a, I'm a print lecturer, I was love showing my prints, but, but some clubs, like the big clubs, in, like in the UK and Smedic and Dublin, places like that, they can video your prints, put them on a big screen, and people can come up and enjoy, you know, they want to see them and enjoy them. Yes. Uh, but on the Zoom, you have them there on your monitor full, so you're not trying to look over someone's shoulder, and people have, have actually remarked on that. Because one of the things I was going to ask is how, how do you bring, I mean, obviously from a paper supplier, we are keen that, that, that prints are still produced, but how do you bring print papers into, a, into to the, the whole digital platform when you're looking to evaluate them? I mean, can you evaluate yeah. on, online? The quick answer is no. Uh, because like I'm involved as 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 you, as you probably know in the distinction panel yeah, assessment yeah. board with, with the Irish Photographic Federation, and that's strictly prints. And you know, from time to time, you get people coming to you saying, uh, "Okay, well, send your stuff online and see what you think of think of this panel or whatever." And they said, "No, send me prints." You know, because monitors differ from one. Uh, is somebody. Uh, are they calibrated? Are they calibrated properly? And uh, you know, the first thing I done, I used to get a loan of a of the calibrator, a monkey, color monkey. Yeah. Um, yeah. When this when this started, this whole lockdown, I really bought my own because I understand it's but you need to uh, have everything right. So uh, the truth is, you can't assess a print looking at a screen. 
because they're not the same yeah. and there's too many variants. Yes. Um, but the other side of that, like something just came up, uh, it's sort of almost reverse psychology type of thing was that people, when I started showing digital stuff on, online to clubs, people were saying, oh, it was actually good to see your digital images uh, and you're able to talk about Oh, would I put this on an art paper? And because sometimes when they're finished with the looking at the finished package, so you have a nice print there on, on your museum heritage or your portrait white or, or whatever, they're looking at the finished article. But some people said it's actually good to see your digital stuff. What's what it's like before you actually print it? And yeah, yeah. And how, you know, people saying because well, they're looking at it on the screen. What paper would you use for that? Rather than me putting up a print with it to finish. Yeah. So uh, that was a bit of a. Uh, a reminder to me to start talking more about what what sort of paper you would use, you know. Yeah. So that that's uh, keeps it alive. Of course, I'm lucky here to have a few prints in the background as well, um, and it, it lets people see that they're very much still involved in in the printing world, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think for most of us, the print is the is the be all and end all, you know. And if, you, if you show some of your printer looking at the same thing as you are, you know, that's you know the tactile, you see the textures or you know, if it's a glossy finish or whatever, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, the answer is uh, you can't judge print on the screen, not really. Okay. So, so there is a need then for setting up some kind of a service where you can have images perhaps collected from uh, people who want their panels judged and, and critiqued and then getting them back, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that kind of has been has been going on uh, anyway. It, it's just now with the new constraints. But, uh, you know, initially, again, a, a bit like the digital technology with people grasp it. Like now, um, yeah, you're going to have to d deliver, you know, if the club wants prints judged, uh, they just have to get them to you a little bit earlier. Like if they're sitting in a box for three days, well, then they're clean, you know. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's no issues as regards handling and. So yes. you can still assess the prints and, okay, you probably have to give uh, the results online over Zoom or something, you know, but you still can assess the prints and, and yeah, uh, the clubs have been doing that. Uh, the only difference uh, is that what would, would traditionally happen with most clubs, they would send the prints to the judge. He would prejudge them in his own time, he or she, take a couple of nights over it or whatever. And then usually they would physically go to the club on, on, yeah. on the club night. Yes. Um, but that that part of the equation now would probably have to be a Zoom night, obviously, you know. Yeah. But the judging process uh, is, is still very much doable as as it was before, you know. Like I would have no issue. If someone drops off prints here with Maureen or whatever, and I say, right, I'll, uh, at the weekend, say, I look at them on Wednesday night or drop them during the week, I look at them at the weekend. Like they're completely clean, and so there's no issues there. It's, it's just the presentation of your evaluation uh, that would probably be. Most likely on Zoom. But I think in, I mean, if Zoom is being projected up onto big screens at clubs, it's probably actually quite nice for the people at the back because they, they get to see a, a bigger version of the person sitting there critiquing the work. So it probably works to yeah. sort of an advantage in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot of these things are trial and error, aren't they? Um, yeah, that, that's it. You know, um, but I suppose for your, your normal club night, a lot of clubs probably haven't, they haven't had to do it, so they didn't do it. Yeah. You know, and it's just like a lot of businesses were maybe contemplating could their workforce work from home and all of a sudden they're forced to do that and, and for a lot of companies it's, it's worked really, really well. And it's going to be the same for the clubs now. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, as I mentioned earlier, say it's Medic, they've been doing that anyway. You know, projecting onto the screen and you have your prints and their exhibition um, and, and some clubs do that. Our own federation often have done it at, at big events. Um, so it's just a little tweak, you know, as I said, where there's a will, there's a way, you know, and that's, that's, that's the human endeavour, human psyche, isn't it? It is, it is, and that's, and that's a good point, you know, because one of the things I was going to say is, do you, have any, do you have any pointers for the rest of the lecturing and ambassador team who might be looking to create a similar sort of platform? Is it just endeavour? <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's, it's not it's not that arduous, really. You know, you can uh, just like that, yeah. Where, where there's a will, like I, I come up with an acronym. Um, I was thinking about all this and, and the COVID. It was actually during during a, a Zoom meeting one night, um, and I was just thinking about what are we actually doing here, you know? And um, I love wordplay and Scrabble and stuff. But anyway, 
not much good at it, but I enjoy it. And um, I said, we're communicating online via internet devices. And the, the acronym for that is COVID. And, uh, you know, so... <laughs> communicating <laughs> online via internet devices. Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. laptops, right. your phone, whatever. People have been tuning in, all sorts of stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's worked out good for me. I, I, I'm, I'm positive, but I, I'm that sort of a person anyway. You know, yeah. I'm doing a, a club talk now on on Thursday night, and uh, we have one next week as a regional event, um, and this is even before the season kicks off. You know, so um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's good. Like, obviously the meeting up with people and going for a pint afterwards. But that'll come, that'll come back, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no way I'm giving up my tours tonight for COVID. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be on here yeah. doing, uh, doing my thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think most of them are the same. Okay, so what then, what factors then influence your, your paper choices, you know, for a given print? I mean, what sort of things would you look for if you were judging somebody's panel and and were wanting to sort of like advise them yeah that's that's i suppose that's the hundred dollar question isn't it um and there's different different situations uh i suppose merit different uh trains of thought really like for, for my own in my own pictures um i would be it's it really break it down into two two choices and and just two choices within them two choices that's the way I've always sort of described it at, at talks and and stuff and the first one is um, do you want to, do you want a, a luster stroke glossy finish or do you want an art finish yeah and uh, so you just said right okay I'm going to go or is it, is it going to be behind glass but but normally in the club scene you're not you're not framing stuff you're, you're just mounting it you know and that yeah, that's yeah, yeah. presentation yes yeah, sure. so, so the, we forget about framing and stuff like that um when it comes down to say i'd say right this would be nice if, I, if i'm looking for a punch in, in, in an image yep uh, so i want to accentuate the colors i'm i'm thinking of a, you know a glass stroke luster paper um and the choice then is how how well will the paper uh, receive the given image? So there is a bit of uh, thought has to go into. Um, do, you, do you want to go for a full gloss, which is you know high sheen? Like I'm thinking the mono gloss, one, one of my favourite papers, um, which is brilliant. It's called mono gloss for some weird reason. <laughs> I love it for colour as well, you know. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah super paper. Um, but it's the barium sulfate layer that's in it, so it's a it's a true. Yeah. Barita paper, which yeah. course, traditionally were in the darkroom days, was a, a mono yeah. paper. But I, I agree with you completely. So yeah. many people put, put you know color images on them, but yeah. you know, it's sort of like there's the, that traditionalist thing from my Nova days of, of the darkroom. Yeah, you know. yeah, and, and, that, and that's fine, and it's it's stunning for Brett and I. I love it, absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, the the other thing then, if you want to go for for more luster type and and. Uh, you know, that's if you want a sort of a flat image. Uh, you know, I, I have certain types of paper or, or image, you know, you might have a lot of highlights in it. And, and this would carry through to the other side of the equation of the art. Uh, so a more luster finish might, might you might prefer for that, you know, and yeah, less yeah. reflections. And so if it's for a panel and you put up, uh, if you could visualize a panel and, and a really high gloss finish and lots of lights and different pictures maybe giving off a reflection towards another, uh, so a luster paper might be nice there that has just a sheen on it, you know. Sure. So there are yeah. sort of things that on that side of the equation, uh, when you move over then and you decide, right, I want I want an art paper, I want an art finish on this, uh, then the two choices within that, as opposed to sort of luster or glass, um, is do you want a mat or a texture? Yeah. You know, and the important thing there is um, if, if you're going to go for a paper, that's heavily textured, like say a gallery etching or something, and you have a very plain, minimalist picture. Sometimes that texture can sort of over override the picture a little bit Definitely. and dominate too much. Yeah, yeah. And so then you need to start thinking maybe towards the, the more subtle matte type papers, um, you know, like like your portrait white or something, which yeah. you know that's one of my favourites on the art side. Um, so that that's again you'd say okay, I'm going to go art, and then you have to say well, what's What's my objective with the picture? And just be careful that the textures, 
if you have say an old interior or a rusty car or a wheel or something and you want to really bring out that texture then the texture paper can, can really Make punch it. that effect yeah, up a bit you know? yeah, yeah. So there you'd be going for your heavy texture so so it, it, is it, if it's is it gloss is it luster or if it's art is it textured or smooth basically that, that's yeah. I, I narrow it down to them keep it simple you know and you don't need you know buckets and buckets of paper and all these the paper, you know, you put some people there and flipping loads of all sorts of paper. And oh, I love that. You. So, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I suppose for everyone that love that, yeah. yeah but yeah. I mean, that, I, I said, but that's, listen, that's what, that's what the test packs are for, you know? Yeah. And exactly. let, let, the, let the manufacturer do the stocking, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably don't want to hear that, but I mean, yeah, no, but that's I think, what test packs are for. When I'm, when I'm talking to people at shows, I'm always talking to people about just pick four papers no more yeah you know yeah. you get into more than four papers and you're struggling then to make decisions as to which one will go yeah. and, and that creates a, a problem in the mindset so people then yeah. don't print it's better that they go this is going to work really well on that and go for it and just try yeah. it yeah yeah because it's about consistency as well and especially if you're starting out and and you're jumping from one paper to another to another you actually don't find your Oh, where where am I going to pin my 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 colours? Yeah. Have you played on a, a paper or two that you really like, and and then you nail your printing. You you know get your printing right, get your calibration right, get your inks right, get all of that, and yeah, get sure. a paper, and you know what's gonna what your results are going to be. And yeah. if you get to that point, then you can. That's a reference point. Yeah. And then well, you can expand. So do you feel that still doing an, a distinction panel for a club is still something that's easily easily done just got to work slightly differently that's the feeling i'm getting coming across from you uh, yeah yeah it's just a slight it's like tweak you know it's yeah. not a major change really you know and i know people i know people have done panels over over the over the lockdown and all of that uh, people have been busy working away you know um so and i do I do think the IPF are going to get their distinction uh, sessions back up and running soon as well. Yeah, um, yeah. and I know they're looking at venues because that's that's going to basically dictate the order of the day and and how it's going to work. Yeah, and um, yeah, so it's just a, it's just a slight change. It's not major. It's not major. And yeah. um, you know, the, the one thing that probably will suffer is uh, you know people just turning up and and enjoying the night, maybe a pint afterwards, and uh, that's on. You know, on the plus side, you can have your beer here on the table, and I've seen everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Expensive champagnes to tea, and, and yeah. everything in between. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, well, thank you, Gabriel. That's great because I think the impression that I'm getting from you is that, like, just let's find a way to get through the current situation and come yeah. out the other side, having continued to do practically as much as we possibly can to keep the whole club scene and the whole distinction panel and judging and evaluation of the finished print, which is, which is great. So. Yeah. 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 And another thing our club done was we set up a, a WhatsApp group just for photography. And so the members feed into that so all the time as well. And it's just keeping everyone together and yeah. letting people know that you're, uh, yeah. you know, they've been taught about and stuff. So yeah, there's loads, there's loads of stuff. There's loads of positivity out there, you know, and just hopefully the clubs, have somebody you know they'll take on it's going to be maybe a new role who, who's, who's looking after the internet and the yes. thing doing the invitations but it, it's you know it's not rocket science it's quite easy actually when i'm when i'm here and doing it and i, I knew the office of a certain vintage yeah, yeah, right. yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. No. that's great no. that's brilliant yeah okay no, yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed um we'll we'll terminate it there and we'll talk again at some point my pleasure, Robin. Thank you very much.